Hello, my name is Liam Arcega, and this is my friend Frank. It's time to stop! And this is Reality Check. Today we're going to have some very important people in the back, and uh, we're going to have them talk about their personal views of reality. Shut up, no one cares! Be nice. Okay, let's bring the first one in. I'm doing great, thanks. Tell me, what's it like being deaf? My job is deaf. Is it a good job? It pays well. Uh, basically, my job is to, after someone dies, uh, teleport to that location and steal their soul and take it to the afterlife. Uh, it's pretty nice, you know. You meet some nice people, like the book thief. So how do you stay sane throughout all of this? Well, in my reality, it's really difficult to deal with all this, well, death happening around you. So. One of my escapes from reality is colors. I really love colors that signify certain emotions and motifs throughout my story. Uh, my favorite color is a chocolate brown sky because that means a bombing's happening and that means I'm about to get busy. But um, I, I think that colors help me notice things and, and those things aren't connected to the grim fact that I'm taking lives. So, so what I'm really saying here is that uh, when I'm taking someone's soul, I focus on the pretty colors as opposed to actually taking their soul. But that really helps me escape from my reality. So um, My favorite color, like I said, is a nice chocolate brown. It's just really beautiful. I also like white and red and other colors that signify different emotions and different escapes from my reality. So uh, why are you so interested in this Liesl lady? Well, I think that... I am interested in Liesl Memminger purely because I've seen her so many times. I saw the book thief three times. You know, the first time when her brother died, the second time when the pilot died, and the last time when Rudy and her mom and dad, well, her adopted parents and everyone died around her. So I'm interested in Liesl because Liesl has a very difficult reality, but deals with her reality very well especially for a young girl. And I think that uh, as a young kid, the circumstances that she has been forced into for her reality, she should turn out a lot worse than she actually does. This is depressing. Touch me, you die. Literally. Wink. Okay, uh, thank you, Death. Speaking of the Holocaust, let's bring in our next guest. And now, introducing my good friend, Ellie Wiesel. <laughs> Wazel, I understand you had a very interesting life. Yes, yes, uh, thank you for having me. Uh, when I was young, I was put in the concentration camp. Before that happened, we had received warnings of what was going to happen. Nobody listened. We rejected the oncoming reality. I, um, I understand you wrote a book about it. Yes, uh, the book is called Night. Yeah, I actually read it, and uh, I thought it was pretty nice. Uh, my, my god, um, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. As this may have found your face and used it, but that's not my reality. My reality, my god died. Oh! Well, okay. Um, my book couldn't communicate the entire pain I felt over those years. All of these people are dying. Whoa, that's, uh, wow. that's, uh, that's, that's great. Uh, can we bring in the next one? Please? Yeah. Thanks. And last but not least, a man who raises more than a few questions, Dominic Cobb. It's time to stop! So, Dom, can I call you Dom? Uh, I suppose. It's not like this world means anything anyways. Excellent! So, Dom, a lot of people have been taken aback by your, um, your method. Let me, let me stop you right there. I've got many different methods in my time. You're going to have to be a bit more specific on which one I'm talking about. Okay, um, your method of, uh, what's it called? 
Inception. Um, it's th this idea of going inside someone's mind, layers within. I know what the idea of Inception is. Now, that. You know, I'll never forget the day I discovered it was possible with, uh, with, with my wife. She, uh, uh, yeah, 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 um, that's great and all, but I honestly don't want to hear about your family problems right now. Please, just tell me, how did you get into this business? Okay, well, I've always been fascinated by dreams. The, uh, the raw space that you can create in your head, completely untapped by your own suppression. Shut up, no one cares! Sorry, but he's right. <laughs> Well, I don't care. If this is really reality, I'm going to make the most of it. Actually, you know, I'll digress for a moment. Reality isn't all that we think it is. It's complex and you can't escape it. Your subconscious dictates your thoughts. So even in your dreams, you must worry because your dreams can become so real that you can lose yourself. Man, this would make a good plot to a movie. <laughs> oh, sorry. I, I fell asleep for a moment there. <laughs> There's no way this could be a movie. It's a, it's a terrible concept. It's too scientific. You know what would make a good movie? The Matrix. Look, I don't care what you think, honestly. This taught me to forgive myself. I hated myself for years and blamed myself for my wife's death. All because of this stupid idea of Inception. If you don't like it, then that's fine. But I left my children for years because they thought I killed her. Do you know what that feels like? Because I do. The, inside, the idea of Inception... The, is the reason that I lost my children. I was able to get them back by playing my cards right. Oh my dude, you just got pranked! Bet you didn't see that one coming, huh? Wait a second. Have I seen you in my dreamscape before? Uh... Alright, let's have one more round of applause for our guest tonight. Listen, it's time to stop! Not, not yet, sit, sit down! Oh. together now in the same room, because I thought you all might want to read each other. You all have very distinct views on reality, so I just want to see how you all react. Like, are you going to kill each other, or are you going to make new friends? So, let's start with you, Death. What do you, how about you share your beliefs with everyone else in the room? Well, as Death, if anyone did want to fight me, they would lose. But, like I said, my job is to collect the souls of the dead you know, death, that's kind of my thing. And my reality kind of sucks. You know, I, I go around picking up dead people all the time and basically murdering people. Wow. But I get paid for it, so it's pretty nice. I escape my reality through colors, and who doesn't like a good paintbrush full of colors? Colors are nice, and, you know, they can mean death, which is me, but they can also mean good things, maybe. I don't know. Not much in my story meant anything good because of the Nazis, but... But I'm sure Ellie's had a lot of experience. Yeah, Ellie, you did have a lot of experience with the Nazis. Hey, Wanna talk about colors? Yeah, how are you, Zell? It is fine, there are, there are no colors in my world. Look, after I lost my father, I didn't care any anymore. I, I never cared about death or anything because I knew that my god wasn't around. Which meant that there must not be anything without death. Very interesting views. What about you, Cobb? Well, I mean, it's not like reality matters whenever we're all gonna die inevitably. But then again, what is death whenever reality isn't real? See, all that death does is it pushes us one step closer to the edge. It's just a matter of figuring out whenever you're at the edge. My wife didn't know that. Wow. Wow. That's quite literally, am I right? I remember that one. Good job. Good job. Oh, wow. Uh I think, I think the guest needs some time to recuperate. You know, when I had to kill Saito in the dream world, it was super weird. I, I've never killed someone in a dream before, but I was there, and I took Saito's soul. I took him. Then why is he with me now? Guys, okay, let's, uh, let's back down for a second. We're gonna take a quick uh, five-minute break. We'll be back in a couple minutes. You couldn't take this, Cobb. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Can you not? No bueno. Es okay, I don't speak Spanish. I'm going to assume that's an okay. You have been listening to Reality Check. We'll see you all next week where we'll talk about the aspect of materialism and communism in the Magic Treehouse book series and other controversial subjects. But as always, stay safe, stay healthy, and most importantly, 
Stay woke. I wake up in the morning, sinking halfway to the bottom. There's a loud, distorted screaming in my soul. Everything is dark and empty, and I don't know how to fix it. So I curl up in a ball and cry in the comfort of my home. Thank you, ladies and- oh. <laughs> <laughs> we, can, we can still use this, we can still use this track. We can still use this track. And now, introducing my good friend! Is it Eli or Eli? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, ah, ah. What are you doing with my flashlight? I don't know, but it's gone wrong. I <laughs> hate myself. Why did I choose to do this project with him? Why is he in my house? <laughs>